Okay, so it's somewhat of a history lesson with OLF, if I can do this properly. Um, a couple videos ago, I had somebody ask me to do a uh, overview on the adjustments that are made on a New Holland uh, Little Baler Nodder. And I thought, you know what, that's something I've never done before. That is a job that really can vex even the most intelligent people. Uh, there's little quirks and little uh, little things that you can do to your knotter to make them perform a lot better than if you just hook to your baler and go to the field. Because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that go to the field and maybe every 10 or 15 bales your knotter will miss a knot. And though it's annoying, uh, you tolerate it because you're just you just never been taught how to fix that issue. It could be a couple of different things. Um, the most, the sneakiest, the sneakiest one isn't in the knotter itself, but in the hay dog springs. Okay? So if you don't know what a hay dog spring is, um, I'll show you here in a second as soon as I open up the knotter here. I've got this open. Um, I've got, I'm going to pull this pin out of here, and I'm going to pull the knotter up out of the way. And I'll show you what the hay dog springs are. Hay dogs on little balers don't break very often. They don't break very often on big balers either. But we're just going to move them out of the way. Okay, a hay dog is this little cast iron gizmo back here. Alright, so as the, as, the bale, as the baler pushes hay into the bale chamber and the slice is formed, the plunger pushes forward or rearward to the baler a freshly cut slice of hay pushing this guy here out of the way this little piece of, of cast iron now in order for and it happens at a lightning fast rate of speed I mean this thing is cranking at I believe 91 strokes a minute and this is the spring right here uh, it's just this little horseshoe shaped spring you may or may not be able to see it these break. Okay. That will cause two things. It'll cause a horseshoe shaped bale and it will cause your knotter to miss a knot because your needles go up through there dragging hay up through the needle. If you're lucky, it you know, if you're lucky, it'll drag the hay up through the needle. If you're not lucky, um, the needle will break. And I've had that happen unbeknownst to me the bottom ones break more often than the top ones just so you know so you got to climb under your baler um, so hay dogs and hay dog springs are very very important to keep your knotter functioning properly the second sneakiest little issue that you're going to have with your knotter and let me pull this down gently is right here this spring this little flat spring they get weak over time okay and I can point it out a little better here they get weak over time so let me set this down gently because if you don't it'll lock up on the tucker fingers and that's a whole nother thing tucker finger springs will break and I'll show you those also and cause you an ass ache hey and I'm gonna show you here right here and I see it right now and look at this even though I didn't have any broken bales here's the hay dog right there the hay dog has worn to the point where it's actually getting up out of the bale chamber and that will allow the hay to go back. Tim didn't have any broken bales but apparently that thing wasn't working. So you could see the foot of the hay dog right here right there that face that's what's supposed to hold the hay. It got chucked up there so the hay dog spring is probably weak or the hay dog is worn to the point where it's able to woggle back and forth and get out of the chamber so I'm gonna have to address that then next time I am uh, gonna go bail okay the second sneakiest I did that that's this spring you can buy these they're pretty cheap very cheap actually and you just take this bolt out here and you you uh, replace it tighten it up and you're good to go some people make them so that they're not tight against the frame I like to put them tight against the frame because I use poly twine if you're still using the old-fashioned Cecil twine or sisal that you may not need you don't need the twine discs as tight as or the twine disc spring as tight as uh, 
as uh, uh, you know tight as it can go. It doesn't need to be that tight, but with with poly, I like to have it tight. So the other thing is your twine disc timing. As you can see, this is your twine disc here, right here at the tip of my finger, and this is the stripper. These guys back here that strips the tails out of there, and then the keeper. I have to flip this back up again. The keeper is here, and this these this is the bottom of that spring for the twine disc keeper or tensioner. Okay, so now we got that out of out of the way. For the most part, twine discs very rarely get really bad. You know, this is an original one. It's probably had 50, 80, 100, 100,000 little bales through it, at least 100,000 little bales through it. And it's still an original one, so, you know, that doesn't go bad. But if it does go bad, or if you do need to time it, you can see where the stripper is protruding just a little bit past the opening of the um, of the twine discs themselves. So in order to adjust that, you loosen this nut here. Let me flip it up. You're going to loosen the nut on the worm gear and take a hammer. I prefer a brass hammer and tap that and then you turn it. You turn the uh, twine discs till they look like that. And then you retension that nut and you're good to go. Now third and final th adjustment, or fourth and final I should say, or pain in the ass, is actually the knife arm. Okay, So this is an interesting adjustment. The knife arm is to gently touch the bill hook. Um, and there's lots of little problems here. Uh, this, this is the bill hook keeper, the, the hook keeper here. That there has a little spring tensioner. I like to have it, you know, fairly tight. There is a, in your operator's manual, I'm sure it has the poundage that that's supposed to be, but a quarter inch of thread on that is usually pretty good. Uh, I have replaced these springs before on the old baler, but never on this one. But anyway, when you're going to change out a knife arm like I did the other day, you saw in that video, let me break out this hammer, okay? So, it's never good to whack your knotters, right? But actually, that's how you set the adjustment. And I'm going to show you, if I can get my camera set up, I'm going to show you how that's done. Um, hopefully I can. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, so, first things first. You get your knotter, or your knife arm, past the bill hook towards the keeper. Okay? Then you get your hammer. This guy here. Ready? Oh, if I can do this. Get your hammer, and you... Whack that. See me hit it? Don't get crazy with it. A plastic dead blow hammer will work. Now, it's tight on that bill hook. Too tight. It won't strip off. It won't cut it right. It screws up the timing. Timing. You're going to miss the knot. So what you do is you kind of bring it to the center of the bill hook, like a so. So you're just at the crown of the bill hook. And then, first we whacked it here. And then, you're going to whack it. Well, let's see if I can hold this and whack it at the same time. You're going to whack it here, just like this. Ready? Okay. And that makes it so that it just touches that bill hook. It won't hold. It won't hold it up. It's set to the proper tension over the bill hook. If it's too loose, and I mean too sloppy, where it's not touching that bill hook, it'll miss knots. If the if this is worn, like this one here, actually, the frame, I need to put another shim in there, which I may do. Not today, but I'm just doing this for purposes, you know, for educational purposes. Um, you just, that's how you set that knife arm, but uh, uh, that adjustment, you do want it to be loose. It doesn't need to be solid and hard because things are moving at a phenomenal rate of speed and they they just really need to be snug but not not hard this one is a little bit looser than I'd like to see it so now if you've done everything that I've showed you here and you still have an issue let me see if I can get this camera to focus and you're still having an issue you have things here called tucker fingers okay these are the tucker fingers so when that needle comes up through 
this these tucker fingers grab that twine and put it up against the knife arm or yeah pulls it forward to the knife arm and if they're not working properly and I mean not working properly at all uh, you, you won't make any knots it'll be two broken knots consistently you won't even see it but there is a spring right here at the back let me pull that down that spring right there could very well be broken and it's not very long but it's enough to drive you nuts so if you don't have it put together properly then you got problems so anyways I hope that helped out another problem is if you've ever noticed after you've serviced your baler and you're going to you've serviced your baler and you're getting ready to go to the field and the son of a bitch just breaks knots for no reason just worked fine the day before you greased it up you go to the field and it won't t keep a knot you end up loosening up the bale and you end up cursing and swearing because you don't know why everything is put together right everything's looking good everything's right where it needs to be and it's still not working you loosen it some more and finally after making about 20 bales things start to work again you start tightening her back up again you start being able to pack a 45 pound bale without any issues whatsoever that problem is too much grease a little bit of grease on a bill hook causes a whole heap of trouble you're kicking hay out of wagons just to just to straighten it out so I hope that was helpful um, I will be making more little bales I put fertilizer on yesterday 15 tons of ammonium sulfate for a second cut and now I just got my sprayer repaired I had a broken wire and it wouldn't adjust my flow rate so I had to track that down me and Timothy did which I didn't film because there was some cursing and some swearing and we did figure it out I knew what it was I just had to find it um, now I'm ready to put the rest of that nitrogen on the fields that are out there that need the nitrogen for second cut it's about three four hundred acres um, I put 15 tons on yesterday a little over application of uh, ammonium sulfate because I need more sulfur than I do need the nitrogen but 42 units of nitrogen uh, 48 units of sulfur I think I'm good to go. But anyways, I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, I really hope it was helpful. And if it wasn't, and or you have more questions, uh, oh, one more thing. Somebody asked me how to thread the needles. Well, I've, if you thread these needles, it's just fine. You know, the, it comes out of there. You got to check to make sure that the tension is fine on the twine box. But they come through here, and they go through that hole. And then there is two more of these insulator looking things on the bottom sides of them you put them through the needles and bring them back to here this point and tie it off cycle it and you're good to go okay so I hope that helped I mean I was rather shocked that someone that's bailed hay for a long time has asked me that question but that's how it's done anyway thanks for watching please comment rate and subscribe hope it was helpful if it wasn't I'm sorry if it was you're welcome have a nice day there's always one more thing um, if you've done everything that I have, you know, showed you in this very dark film, I'm sure there's going to be some comments about that, uh, and you're still having problems or whatnot, you're going to have problems. Uh, on the right-hand side, you have the needle yoke drive brake. And over time, the brake shoe will... Uh, wear and your needles will actually it'll go all the way back but because they come back with such force they'll actually drift back down that means that your needle yoke drive brake is worn to the point where either you need to tighten it or you uh, need to replace it so uh, you can look on your balers if your needles are relaxing or dropping down uh, you'll break needles if that thing is bad so check that thanks for watching